Yo, dog, Kenny Boucher here, The Long War. I'm joined tonight by my partners in crime, Wyatt Turk and Mike Caspel. How's it going, guys? Yo, what's up? Greetings and felicitations. Mm. The legendary Mike Caspel, author of Graveyard Shift, has returned to us to fill the spot. Uh, Rob's doing Rob shit. Who knows at this point? He uh, invading other planets, passing himself off as a as a human yeah. as a, as a, yeah. hello as fellow a humans <laughs> classic and we, i almost had a solo this bitch last week uh mike oh really uh, i'm yeah. sorry man no like i i went in here and fucking why it was nowhere to be seen rob canceled and i'm sitting here trying to do this thing and then why it finally shows up like an hour in and, and I, he was like yo you just started super early tonight it's like no normal time <laughs> but i had already figured it out because he's not used to california yet Oh. You know, you do the podcast exactly the same time every day for like five, six years. Is you yeah. know, so I'm taking a nap, <laughs> fully <laughs> asleep. Uh, yeah, I I set an alarm and I woke up. I looked at the time, and I was like, "Oh, it's only like five thirty. I got like half hour." And then like went back, <laughs> and then Kenny was like blowing my phone up, and I was like, "Oh, oh no." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I wish I could have helped, but uh, unfortunately, I was working on a proposal that was very short term. So, yeah, Mike, I, I ask you almost every week. People are always asking about yeah. you. I was like, you got, Mike Ass was a busy man, guys. I will be here if I can be, but and here's the situation: is I, I kind of got an, a voluntold promotion at work. <laughs> like they were like, "Hey, why don't you be in charge of this?" And I was like, "Uh, how about no." And they were just like, well, here's your pay raise and you're in charge of this. <laughs> so you, know, like, uh, you know, of all the stories I've ever heard of a voluntold scenario, <laughs> the like the money before, yeah. the, you know, like that kind of solidifies it. Yeah. Like, so basically wanna, I was like, okay, I guess I'm doing that. I guess you can return all that extra money. You're like, no, <laughs> fucker, I'm keeping the goddamn money. I'll do your stupid job. <laughs> but yeah, it was like I, the reason... It is because I wanted to like fuck off and like play magic and and 40k and stuff and not work extra. But so for the listeners at home, are you still a contract proposal writer? I am, yeah, hmm? yeah, doing well, like doing very well. Yeah, but I mean, like your career is very I mean, busy. Like you, I mean, busy. at this time, how long you've been doing that? I mean, like, uh, I've been writing proposals since 2016, yeah. which to me is new. And it's like been almost 10 years. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, but it's been a decade and you slap at it. <laughs> so. That's like, that's like, uh, and this is old too. Like five years ago, I took in my car to get a head unit, like a new head unit in. And he goes, oh, what model? The guy who was helping me. What model? Your Jeep Liberty? I go, I go uh, it's a Jeep Compass. And, it's, oh, and Compass. he goes, what year? I go, it's kind of new. And I go, and I start thinking about it. And I'm like, ah, it's a 2007. And he's like, bro. <laughs> that is not a new car. <laughs> I was like, well, it's new to me. My Monte Carlo Super Sport had 385,000 miles on it. This is barely over 100. It's still a new car. We've driven that compass all the way to Chicago multiple times. Yeah. Time warped to mm -hmm. Chicago. And I'm, and, I'm, and I'm driving that Ranger in 2004. Yeah. Do you remember going to Adepticon that one year where I was telling you nobody acknowledged anything because we made, we like time jumped like two hours? Yeah. And and yeah, I was just like, okay, so everything is saying this should take 16 hours. We're at 14 hours and we're pulling into the hotel. Like, don't acknowledge it. It's a Twilight Zone moment. Yeah. We just we just time time jumped yeah. two hours. We literally time traveled. <laughs> I remember that. Oh man. I remember all that. So, you know, before we get started tonight, I just want to mention so I'm, you know, I moved into the new beats lab, Mike. Uh, I moved in with my girlfriend. Nice. I moved out of my parents' house. And well, that that sounds worse than it is. You were transitioning from from one movement to another. I, I like to, you know, it's funny because I've watched this other guy's podcast who talks about how like moving out of your parents' house is a psyop. And I actually like, as a longtime marketer and commercial artist and advertiser and brander, I can I can see it. Like, because mm -hmm. if you see how a lot of other cultures run their game, like the need to be like ejected from the nest is not like really deeply ingrained in a lot of the cultures. 
but it is an American culture really starting around World War II and like the time of like radio and then when TV showed up. If you really think about it, it's like getting us out of the house to go cowboy across the country is just a way to multiplicatively enhance the amount of consumerism in the country. Mm -hmm. And what inevitably happens for most people is they end up having to go back home for a little while and then go back out. You know what I mean? So you ended up just kind of fucking yourself a little bit. Whereas my friend, a good friend of mine is going to be coming you know, for a visit. My, my good buddy, Mark, who's uh, you guys have actually seen on the show before. Uh, he's Brazilian and he was my cross street neighbor in Kendall when I lived out of Miami. Right. He didn't leave the house. Until he was like 35. Yeah. Well, he owns, cultures, he owns his, he's, yeah. owned, he's owned his own house for like 10 years, dude. Yeah, <laughs> they do it really differently. You, you like multi multi generational households. Are, yeah, are the norm. I was like, um, so this was like kind of like that extra year I needed to get back on my shit after everything. And I couldn't have timed it better. Honestly, it was a really heartfelt moment, Mike. So like, you know, I, I spent like three weekends going about because I I go to my girlfriend's house on the weekends. Mm -hmm. Spent like three weekends, like just kind of bringing stuff over, bringing stuff over for the move. This is her place. Uh, mm -hmm. and finally the last thing that always goes is the computer and the rig and all the right, equipment. Right? right. And so my parents see me like packing up my, you know, my action packers and everything. And then I turn around the road, just standing there in the door frame in an unusual emotional moment. Yeah. I'm like, what are you guys doing standing there? I'm like, grabbing my shit. And they're like, well, we just want to give you a hug goodbye, which is not a, like a normal day, right. you know, day in my household. And I was like, what's going on? She's like, well, like you grabbed your computer. That means you're going. And so like, we just loved having you here for this year. And it was amazing. And even my dad gave me a hug and he was like, yeah, you know, we're retired and our life is like one way, but you were here for a year. And that was like another way. And that's, we're never going to forget that. It was amazing. And I was like, yeah, fuckers, I'm going to see you this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, that was last week. I then I saw them that week and I stayed, I crashed and grabbed, grabbed a couple more things, cleaned up my whole room, vacuumed that bitch. You know what I mean? But it does make me realize that I have to spend as many moments as possible, you know, time allowing yeah. to make yeah. occasions. And, you know, I think I... You, have to, you have to start making time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that year, that year-long journey has come to its end. Shout out to 40K Sue and my ridiculous dad and his ham radio nonsense. <laughs> My first, you, my first Instagram reel when I got out there, Mike, was my dad almost burning on the forest. I do remember <laughs> seeing that. It was like, and you wrote something like "average Florida man day" or something. Yeah, that was like the <laughs> second day I was there, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but but I, I'm bringing this to a close. I'm gonna land the plane here. Set up all the stuff. Some things have followed me around for years, like my 2007 Galactus from HeroClix. That I've always had. That was my greatest shame, my greatest <laughs> financial shame. I'm actually going to give it away oh. uh, on Tuesday the eighth, which is my celebration of 14 years in business. Damn. So that mo that model's been in my Beats Lab longer than I've had a Beats Lab. And by wow. the, by, and KR Quinn, we counted. He says 10 Beats Labs. I think it's nine because he counts the mobile soup kitchen. But I did stream. From that U, uh, Utah hotel in Beaver Creek twice. There's two nights. So he says this is the 10th Beats Lab. So in 10 Beats Labs, the Galactus wow. has been in all of them. So he's the only fixture that's that OG uh, besides one. The 2007 Adepticon Best Heretical, my first oh, time in Adepticon. Oh, wow. Yeah, I still I have that. You have It's not in you, here. It's in the basement. So I have two best heretics because of you. And uh, so I was just putting up my trophies, which is the final point I want to make. And I was just looking at them and I was like, fuck, man, look at all these like 2007 Adepticon. Yeah. Look at it when we won best heretical this time, that time. You know what I mean? Like, it was just like, th th those are always a fixture at the B side. Like, that these four plaques that are independently meaningful to me, right? The first Adepticon, the second uh the first time we, the only time we won adepticon teams uh war games comp i won i won the gt there once because i love that event but my first overall at a doubles event remember donovan donovan was my team partner yep that's a meaningful little ribbon just a little ribbon and then that big uh old school games workshop 2004 gt atlanta best sportsman so it's like a 
it's like a theme, a sportsman, a doubles win, and an overall win. It's like these nice. four are the most meaningful trophies in my life, like for my 40K. So I was decorating, and I was thinking about all those drives to Adepticon in Chicago over the years, you oh, know? Yeah. So super, and yeah, Kara Quinn in chat, of course, he's like, it counts. Fucking Beaver Creek, Utah, <laughs> mobile soup kitchen, streaming from the fucking, mm, the deep. You have to do what you got to do, man. No, oh, dude, I I made it happen, bro. But that's the update, guys. Uh, we're about to be doing 14 years. It's 10, 10, 10. That's when we opened the doors on this business. We give it that's away. That's 42 in binary to anybody who cares. Mm-hmm. I do. <laughs> I care. But that's how my stupid ADHD brain works. I love your ADHD brain. I just know dumb <laughs> shit like that. <laughs> so updates anyone at home listening let's kick it over to oh topics table of contents if you're listening to your drive to work right now we've got a topic that white's going to spearhead us in about the points to uh the, the field manual points to lay a little conspiracy theory but also some really good observations on point values and how they should be looked at in the future and we also have maybe a little rehashing of a star star trek conversation we had earlier but we also have mike castle here maybe talk about his his experiences with space marine 2 which has been a you know box office smash but before we get to that let's kick over to white turk to our peabody award-winning segment let's roll out to the cave of wonders and touch nothing but that lamp would you rather the national anthem be changed to the power of love by Huey Lewis in the news, <laughs> or hip to be square by Huey Lewis in the news. Defend your answer. Uh, the power of love, hands down. Um, my defense is that because it was in one of the most perfect movies ever made, Back to the Future. So I could be wrong about that. I don't remember. I know that Huey Lewis was in Back to the Future. Was it back in time? Uh he did that song, but I think the power of love was in. Oh, it was like a needle drop. In the... It was a. It oh, okay. was in the movie. And I do think that that movie is a perfect movie. Like it's pretty close, yeah. No notes. Now the sequels, leave. You know we can talk about that, but the but the initial Back to the Future, is kind of perfect. What was the other option besides Power of the Love? Hip to be square. Yeah, oh, to be square. I'm, I'm muting myself and listening to these. So I, don't... I, would, I knew you were. It's <laughs> like, like Kenny gets to look these songs up right now. <laughs> so while while Kenny's thinking about this, here's a fun trivia fact for you. Uh, one of my favorite films of that same era is Ghostbusters. And Ghostbusters, there's a pretty good case, is a ripoff of Huey Lewis's I Want a New Drug. Listen to them both back to back, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Oh, the song for Ghostbusters? Okay. Hmm. More hip rock and roll news on KN91, The Blaze. (laughs) I don't don't know. I'm just making shit up. But that is, is, there was a lawsuit apparently, and they settled out of court. Interesting. Um, Because the temp track that was on ghostbusters when uh ray was shown the shown the movie to compose the song was i want a new drug um oh and then and then he oh i see so it he may not have been intentional it may not have been intentional it may have been subconscious but there's okay. definitely a connection between Huey lewis and the news and ghostbusters so there you go more cool useless fact. trivia you get a little sliver of what it's like to be me. <laughs> so the power of love is the better song. Yeah. I think more iconic. Uh, so the national anthem, we're talking like someone has to yeah. sing this at every baseball game now. Yeah. yeah. Like, so people are going to be singing this song with whole new renditions, bro. That slaps so hard. <laughs> That's way more exciting than what we got going on right now. Or you know how many different ways people can sing this joint? Yeah, at least it's like a dope song. Because like one thing that really bothers me is when people try to like they they try a little too hard when they're doing the national anthem. Yeah, they church it up a little bit. And, just, and I'm like, dude, it's not that type of song. Just stick to the basics. Sing the goddamn song. 
but with like power of love or hip to be square like that's a whole like thing every time and to another another piece of trivia our national anthem as it is now is a beer drinking song called to anacreon in heaven look it up (laughs) i'm not not making it up bro (laughs) because that's the way we used to roll that used to be this country. <laughs> Back in my day. It was just a beer drinking song. I love it. And they just sort of phrasing is that song and then they just changed the words. They changed the lyrics, yeah. <laughs> it's like taking like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and changing the lyrics. Yeah, changing the lyrics. Yeah, that slaps. Yeah, I picked Power Love. Power Love's awesome. I would literally lose my shit for a halftime. Like, nobody would care about a halftime show. Think about it. Like, you'd be booking the most baller opening acts. To this, like, the Super Bowl would be all about who sang Power of Love. Yeah, dude. It wouldn't matter anymore, like, about... It's power. like a whole a whole uh, production, like, every time. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. I kind of wish that was reality. It's the first one um, you'd rather yeah. I just wish was reality. Yeah. Uh, in the chat, Cletus corrected me. He goes, it was the song of an English social club. Um, so there you go. Are social clubs drinking clubs? Basically. I would say yes. <laughs> Tight. Okay, well, let's uh, move into news. Mm-hmm. Any news, Wyatt? Oh. A couple of little things. Um, Dan Abnett's coming out with a new book. For 40k, yes, um, about fighter fighter pilots. That should be fucking cool. A long-awaited sequel, actually. I had I had given up on it. I had figured that they they had pushed out the first book, um, for Aeronautica Imperialis, and then I figured since they moved on, we weren't going to get more of that. So I'm pumped for it. Should be should be tight. Um. Blood Angel stuff goes on pre-order this weekend. So if you missed out on the box set, a lot of that stuff is coming to pre-order. A couple of data sheets for the new kill teams getting posted for 40K, the um, Vespid and the Sounds. So you can go over to the Warcom and download those. Mm -hmm. That's about it. Thank you, Wyatt. I appreciate your efficiency. Yeah, I, you know, I've always suspected we can do in like a like a day what, <laughs> what yeah. Rob does in like a year. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Well, it's his it's his cold metabolism. You can't blame him for that, man. You know, you're right. That was kind of racist to me. <laughs> it was a little. It was a little humanist. Humanist. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, you're right. I take it back. So, whenever we have Mike Haspel on the show, it's always a treat. And uh, did you see my title for the episode? I did. I did not. Why? Read that oh, shit out. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable! The shocking comeback of a Warhammer legend. You won't believe uh, <laughs> what happens next. Yeah. Mike, I have this clickbait generator. I fucking love it. <laughs> just oh. try, I just type in it's nonsense, gold, bro. <laughs> Oh, man. So we've got Mike back. People always asking about Mike. Mike's always busy. We we always talked about that earlier. So what you been up to? What are you interested in right now? Give us some nerd shit. Yeah. So the first off, I got to start with something somber. Uh, there is an author I know who's really, really good author. He has been diagnosed with uh, terminal brain cancer. So uh, if you could help him out and if you like sword and sorcery, pick up his books his name is Howard Andrew Jones, and his uh, the first book, the, the books I'm going to recommend are The Chronicles of Hanuvar, and uh, the first book is called Lord of a Shattered Land, and they're, they are sword and sorcery, so if you enjoy like Conan, like Robert E. Howard, um, Edgar Rice Burroughs, that kind of stuff, Lynn Carter, L. Sprague de Camp, if you like that kind of stuff, you're going to love his stuff. Um, the, the, the character is not a Conan like character, so I don't want to like sell it like that, but it is a um, it is sword and sorcery 
And the the way the novel set up is almost like a series of short stories that are all inter- interconnected. So like mm-hmm. a series of episodes. So you don't have to read the whole novel at once. You can just read these little short stories and they're really, really good. And the third one is coming out from Bain Books relatively soon, like in a month or, or so. Um, but two of them are out right now. So please help them out and pick up some books or whatever. There is also a GoFundMe, but uh, I think... I think they'd rather the easiest way to support him right now is just to buy his yeah. books. Well, look those up. What was the name of that first book? Um, Lord of a Shattered Land. Uh, they're they're very tight. They're really good. Uh, from Bane. Well, that Bane. was that's the series. What was the book title? Oh no, the the series is called The Chronicles of Hannibal. Oh, okay. Yeah, and they're really really good. Uh, <laughs> on my front, what I've been up to is mostly day job stuff. Uh, I've been inundated. Just we've been doing very well. But also the the tempo is is beginning to be a bit insane, and I'm hoping they hire more help. Um, but on the other front is, and I was joking about it before. I said it's like getting together, getting back together with like a crazy ex that that you used to have a restraining order against, <laughs> and now you just know it's bad. It's not going to work out. But it's like I'm getting back into Magic the Gathering, <laughs> and it's like, oh no, I just know this is. This is rough, but I've already set limits for myself. Like I'm not deck chasing. I'm not building. I'm not paying attention to the meta. I'm literally just, I bought a commander deck and I'm like, okay, these are the colors. This is what I'm playing. That's who are you, you going to play with? Uh, I am playing with, um, it, her colors are a uh, black and blue and it's the new house of something. It's a horror themed thing that's that's like i'm telling you i'm trying desperately not to like get <laughs> you, you, you don't want to just go hard you want to want to you gotta get it you just casually I, I'm, just, I'm just like towing the line trying to stay as casual as i can to keep mm. with gaming because i'm not gonna lie i got a little bit of sticker shock the other day i'm, I'm also playing in a crusade uh at the local store which is tons of fun but unfortunately because of the day job i think i'm gonna have to bow out which is and, no, which is normal. A lot of people at the bow, but backpedal real quick in the crusade. Uh, yeah. like I definitely want to hear about your experience up until now. It's We're, the crusades. I think is people are sleeping on it, right? Uh, people are sleeping on that format of 40k. The crusade is amazing. It is really incredible. So they're in their second season of the crusade, which is Pariah Nexus matches the cards, right? before it was Leviathan with the, the Nids. And you can still play the Leviathan uh, missions and everything. But now everything is going to to uh, Pariah Nexus. And the Goon, Goonhammer has an administratum part of his page that you pay for, but it's, it's super cheap. Um, that helps you do all the paperwork. And without the Goonhammer thing, I big shout out to him for administratum. But without that, it makes it makes the housekeeping uh, kind of a chore. But with his with his app on his website, it it makes it work great. Manages everything. Everyone can put all their armies in there and everything and track. Because the whole thing with the crusade is it's not a one and done. Like when your units die, they may get battle scars. Units that survive get more experience. Um, they can get units that do things in the game, like kill multiple units or pull off some heroic move or whatever. They get to get upgrades. So you may have some lowly guardsman unit that on their sixth game is hitting as hard as space marines because they're just veterans and they're that tight. You know what I mean? They have all these little upgrades and yeah, you know, and some of them are, some of them are nothing. Some of them are like, okay, you can buy this different weapon instead of this but some of them are huge like you get to reroll hits so it's a big deal and it is it is a heck of a lot of fun it is a way to do organized play with outside of a tournament you know so it, because a crusade runs months you know you're right. like organized like play versus match play right? exactly yeah yeah so so it's running for months so you you start up i think we started at 500 points the next uh the next tier is 750 and then it'll go up to 2000 you know eventually um and so we have i don't know how many people we have in this crusade now probably around 30 
I would guess. Uh, that sounds fun as hell, dude. I kind of want to get a crusade going now. It's really, really cool. It's really, really, really cool. And so folks just get together. We coordinate the games on Discord. Jump in there. Everyone, we do have a designated night to sh- that everyone shows up to play. But knowing that, you know, people have conflicts, they just go, hey, you just need to get your report games. Report the in. results. Through, report, you know. report the results of this game at this time. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately for me, it's like I've got, I've got um, due to the day job, and then I've got like a writing gig that's actually coming to fruition that I need to. I'm like, I just don't have time. And then the third part, the third component of that, is I'm playing my Necrons. So in my head, my <laughs> Necrons were super tight, right? And I had assembled all the new stuff from I guess it was Indomitus. The Indomitus box set? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I had two of those, and I had assembled everything and primed them, um, but I hadn't started painting them yet. But I have all the units I need. So I was just like, well, I don't like playing with unpainted stuff, so I will just go back to my fourth edition stuff and just run old school Necrons until I get these new guys painted up because immortals are immortals. Warriors are warriors. That hasn't changed. Monolith's still around, right? Uh, the deceiver is still around. And back in the day in fourth edition, my, my go-to list was like, uh, I might, I might be, I might be lying here, but it was something like 40 warriors, 20 immortals, a monolith and the deceiver. So that's about right. Was, yeah. And it was like, close it wasn't unbeatable but it was close to unbeatable in that era fourth edition it was in, wrong. In that it was, edition, it it was, was hard rough. it was hard to fight against because the monolith could drop down on people and it would deep strike on top of you and you had to move the monolith wouldn't move it mm-hmm. would just come down where it came down and so my whole strategy was the deceiver would press as far forward as he could then the monolith would come down in your own lines, pushing your guys forward into the receiver. And it was, it was all over. Um, but what, so what's the problem with the Necrons? Well, when I pulled them out of storage, <laughs> memory is a funny thing. You and forgot models, how good they looked. Like they were obviously immaculate and beautiful. They were obviously the best looking models ever. But I was just like, I literally hadn't played with these guys since fifth edition. And let's just say I wasn't as good a painter as I am now. So, and on top of that, I used some trickery to make them look a lot better than they did look. So what I had done was paint them in actual copper paint and then used an, a chemical oxidizer to oxidize them. So they're actually real vertigree. <laughs> All the models. And I'm like, in a way, it does look weird and tight. But in another way, it's not going to pass in this day and age, man. <laughs> in another way, it's not tight. It is not tight at all. It looks really jank. And so I'm like, man, I got to repaint, you know, 9,000 points in Necrons. And I'm just like, oof. Oof. Instead, I'll play Magic. Yeah, that's kind of the way it went. <sighs> it's kind of was like, or I could, well, the sticker shock I got is I needed one other model to make the list that i wanted to make and i it was a new model so i didn't mind buying him but and there was a new gw shop in colorado springs that's a big deal that's a big deal we actually have a warhammer store you're on the map now dude we're on the map so went to the warhammer store and bought this model and this one model was 40 Mm dollars. and i was just like yeah yeah um, I do, I, and someone's asking, Zenwu is asking if I had the LED monolith. I do have the LED monolith. It still works. It still plays all your base or belong to us techno version. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, was a, it was an iconic. I mean, it's a part of the, honestly, that article, Empire yeah. Monolith, which, you know, anybody who takes offense to that term, it was based on MTV Pimp Your Ride. Pimp Your Ride. It's, it's going to give it to you. Um, that's a part of history at this point, bro. Like that article has been around, dude. Like they, that is an article back in the day when all we had was blogs, you know, and a couple of forums. The article was a part of some people's childhood at this point. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? 
And so, yeah, the Pipier Monolith article is still up on apocprod.com. Is that your website? Yeah, apocprod.com. And if you if you go and you watch, um, if you type in, like, uh, LED Monolith or all your base that belong to us, Monolith, the video is still on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I posted that video, like, 16 years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm just, yeah, and Kara Quinn just called me out, and he's absolutely right. Because the other thing that came in, uh, he goes, the guy who buys Weta and a Warhammer model cost hits you in your costs. <laughs> so uh, what I got this week was I got the limited edition Lieutenant Titus uh, from Weta. Yes, yeah, I saw it, that on your Facebook page. It is glorious. It is, it is so big, I have nowhere to put it. That's, that's, uh, so on the one Bro, hand, I don't want to fucking hear that. You have a Han Solo carbonite, dude. You can, I know. you'll find a spot for this bitch. <laughs> like, well, I almost, part of the thing was when we got the basement redone, we put in spotlights for the Han Solo and carbonite. And so it's got spotlights in that position. And I thought, you know, I can get rid of the Han Solo and carbonite. And, uh, not and, after hearing the story of how you got it true it is <clears throat> it is kind of an iconic life experience but nowadays it's like are people even it's like it it's the marie kondo thing does it bring me joy or does it remind me of what could have been and <laughs> and the fallen the fallen ip that is star wars you know i mean <clears throat> i get behind that i'm giving away my galactus this month <laughs> i i didn't get the galactus at that gen con i got cthulhu <sighs> so i have the big the big Cthulhu. Um, but yeah, so, and then I've been playing Space Marine 2, which unfortunately I just haven't had time. So I'm only halfway through the uh, the campaign and I'm, I'm enjoying it. I really like it. My favorite part of it though is watching all the memes as like quote unquote normies are discovering. The lore for the first time. <laughs> discovering the lore. And they're just like, like what? what <laughs> that's one of my favorite memes is somebody who took a screenshot of like titus standing in a war room and there's like a baby cherub flying next to him that we don't even notice anymore and they're just like what <laughs> what is happening <laughs> <laughs> and i'm just like it's gold it's so good yeah that, i mean that's awesome i can't wait to hear your final thoughts uh, the game is a box office smash. It's one of the, it's it's tr really truly good. profound. The amount of videos I've seen on the internet from quote unquote normies talking about it, it's it's inspiration. It's inspiring for our. It's our really hobby. good that people are having fun with it and they're discovering the lore and it's bringing in a whole ton of new people. Mm -hmm. And I just hope that um, I just hope that it stays positive. That's Bro, I, got, I got people almost every other day showing up on my painting stream, Mike. Like new to the game just and i'm always like oh let me guess you played uh you know space marine 2 and they're like yeah, yeah. but it's funny because they always like try to like play it cool like oh you know i've always kind of been into it the lore you know just get into the mm -hmm. models and i was like no nah, dude no you haven't you, you you saw it you bought it then you started you know you, yeah. you google some shit you found bricky bricky told you about some lore and let me guess now <laughs> there's a space marine chapter you really want to start and that's why you're here and every time dude that's what it is they're like oh, i want to do this chapter i want to do that chapter it's always so much but you know what's tight about that mike is that they're always hitting me with like so you know the obscure lore you know how, like back in the day it was pretty in trend right right to find like some really obscure deep lore on some chapter that is a you know og no one knows about with some hardcore the, for me it was the relictors yeah relictors exactly <laughs> <laughs> and so they're, you know, you you think you're pretty fucking edgy because you fucking got the religious lore, you know what I mean? And you want to be different than everyone else, which is your personal yeah. identity. Which we've all gone through that all, like we've done that. Yeah. So it is yeah. pretty cool to see a wave of it, potential it's, it's new crazy. hobbyists going through that right now. The Warhammer store here is sold out of anything with Ultramarines on it, like as what well, as, as boxes, is this to be expected. Yep. Yeah. And I think that's where they kind of messed up. I'm like, where's the Titus blister for 20 bucks, right? Mm -hmm. the, where's, yeah. the, where's the Titus blister where you get somebody who's like, hey, I played the Space Marine game. I just, I, I would like to get Lieutenant, Lieutenant Titus, right? 
and you can't buy it except in that uh, big box store. I think it's a Target exclusive here in the States. Yeah. It's actually a really good deal because the game is like 40 bucks. You get Titus and then you get like 12 Hormigons or Termigans. They just announced they're doing Joy Toys of the three main characters. Yeah. I already pre ordered those. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, you're right. Like, um, as as a uh, exclusive model whore myself, uh, I'm really. Uh, and an shows. ultramarine dick sucker. Yeah, dude. Like, give me give me all three of those dudes as like yeah. a Space Marine Heroes squad, man. Yeah, they should absolutely put those guys out, and I would make it more affordable than the regular ones, just to. Um, and it's like, I don't know. I I was hoping McFarlane would put out a Titus too, um, but we'll see. It's easy enough to mod the McFarlane guys with three D printing now, that you can easily get you know make them Titus. So oh, yeah, I mean, they're sleeping on it because we're just gonna three start three D printing Tituses, like. Yeah, bug it, Titus. <laughs> Titus, god damn it! What a hate, what a hero! I've I've watched so many reaction videos why of people playing the game, and then when you know, Big Daddy Marnius jumps out of the fucking what what, what is he in? Is it a, is it it's a, a Thunderhawk, dude? It's a Thunderhawk, yeah. right? He comes in. He's literally like out on the ramp of a flying just blasting fools oh my god dude when he drops down i love his like casual way he's shooting the people and his vicious guard is just like get fucked get fucked get fucked (laughs) and you're just like and people watching that for the first time they're like who the fuck is this i want to do whatever he says that's lord calgar dog yeah yeah that might that might be the hypest moment in any media at this moment to this moment right now that is the hypest scene in all produced media we've ever had a hundred percent okay competing with the hype of the dawn of war 2 cinematic trailer when they're in the you know when the eldar spring their trap and Mm -hmm. and you know when they're like what the fuck's going on and then the fucking dreadnought comes out and they're fighting the banshees and they're screaming coming through the woods that was hype and then when he comes up to that fire seer barely makes it through gets you know gets her and she's like you know looks up at the sky and you see the seeding swarm coming to the planet there it's that but that's a huge four minute long trailer yeah that marnius encapsulates in a simple i'm gonna jump off this bitch it just shows up shoot some bitches <laughs> that's like, it I don't no story, nothing, and then it's the reaction of the people around him, right? They're like Lord Cargar, like, and they all like that whole. Uh, I, I feel like we have to include like the entire pre-rendered cutscene for that because it's like, oh, they're doing the thing. They're doing the Space Marines on a hill with the banner, mm-hmm. like every Codex cover we've ever seen. Yeah, last stand with the homies, and then Calgar comes in and just starts. And it really shit shows up. you how simple storytelling can be. Yep. <laughs> It really tells you, and that's what I get at, man. Like, it's it, all, the whole plot of that scene is duty and honor, man. That's yeah. it. And it's like you always say, why? What's everyone's, what's every American's dream is to die in a land war in Europe? Yeah. Europe? <laughs> Dude, I've seen a lot of memes where it's like, uh, it, well, it's it's the same meme, but it's been circulated a lot since the game comes out. And it's like the, the old, like, men only want one thing, and it's disgusting. And it's literally right. like, Titus and the boys on the hill doing the space marine thing. And I'm like, yeah, honestly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it just shows you how you how simple storytelling can be, especially if you're if you know your demographic. You know? So I <laughs> Yeah, I saw like a I saw like a little meme, you know, acted out like a TikTok thing or whatever where there's two couples sitting down they're having dinner and one of the women says you know um yeah i've been playing space marine 2 with my boyfriend and it's a lot of fun and i want to know more about the lore and and the other couple's boyfriend goes goes oh really you want to get into 40k and she goes yeah tell me about the and then everyone else at the table is like no don't <laughs> and it's, it's like 48 hours later and he's just getting to the beginning of the horse heresy it's uh it's funny because um my girlfriend whenever like we meet a couple or go somewhere 
I mean, a family member, they're always, you know, inevitably they're going to realize that I have asked everyone what they do and I'm trying to get to know everyone and try to be charismatic and a good, you know, uh, yeah. you know, a, 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 make it a good impression. Right. And eventually it's been like hours and someone's been like, what do you do? And then I'm just like, I'm a, I'm an art instructor. Right. At this point, you yeah. should just be like, I, I am a content creator for OnlyFans. <laughs> I just because well, because it's the 40k thing. I mean, I do that right. bit as well, but it's the it's the 40k Lord thing, right? I don't want to get entrenched because I already know what happens. Because yeah. if you're like, oh, you know, I paint miniatures and I do this, and then they're gonna ask you, well, well of what? And then they're gonna be like, oh, this is weird. What is this about? And then before right. you know it, it's just the 15 people who, you know, asking you questions about Warmer 40K and the one person you showed up the party with is like, oh my God. <laughs> and you're so, just like, okay. <gasps> okay, so there were these mm -hmm. shaman that created and thought that they needed to create an immortal being. <laughs> and you're just like, I 48 just, hours later. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm just like, yo, I'm an art instructor. Like, oh, that's really cool. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, but like, what do you do? <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's not get started on this nonsense. Yeah, exactly. And a little update that happened this week uh, is the developers of the game came out and they said that uh, the a voice that you hear at the kind of like the end of the game, it's like it's the emperor's voice. So not wow. only do we have the hypest moment in all 40k media, but we also have the first cameo of the emperor in visual 40k media. Wow. Is it the Cavalrine? No. No. Oh. I don't I mean I don't even know if they're credited. I'd have to watch the credits, but when when you hear the voice and it says Rise, son of Gilliman, it's the Emperor talking directly to Titus. Wow. Okay, that's really cool. Dimitri and Titus. Tight. All right. Well, fuck it. Let's do a quick commercial break. Check. Earlier tonight during the after hours content you were talking about points conspiracy theories hmm. and potential fixes yeah so i mean i guess like no news is also news like we were all expecting the eagerly awaited unitorum field manual for 40k and what everybody thought it was going to happen this past week right and the day it came and went, and we're like, yo, what the fuck? Um, and so, I don't know, maybe it comes out tomorrow, and this is all meaningless. But uh, the funny thing is that during this, uh, I noticed that a brand new web page for Warcom was published on that Thursday. And so I was like, Everybody was like, oh, well, you know, maybe they're doing this or maybe it's because of this release or this tournament. And I was like, no, they pushed it back because they had to publish a new URL for Warcom. Like all of this stuff goes through a pipeline of like devs through to like approval to give it to the guys who run the, the, the website. And there's a queue, right? Like if Rob was here, you could definitely talk us through the ins and outs of all that. But like, Warcom has like a weeks long queue of however many articles, like do the math to so, like three, four or five articles a day, seven days a week. So weeks in advance of, you know, tens and tens and tens of articles and every other thing to get pushed to the website. I'm like, well, any other time that a company has to, you know, update a webpage or push a new URL, uh, that's like all hands on deck because that's like a big thing that has you need constant uh eyes on for like maintenance and making thing making sure everything is working correctly so i'm like well we didn't get the mfm because they decided that it was more important to push the new work on url and mm -hmm. it's been it's been pushed back however long that queue is or you know um but anyways we were talking about that and uh lots of 40k players right now are the kind of in a holding pattern because uh there's not really a big stateside event until like the end of the month and the game has been a kind of a stale place since like beginning of september like kind of kind of for a while um and so it's weird we've, we've all been there like oh i want to prep for this or i want to i want to mm -hmm. prep for that thing but 
I can't really prep much because I don't know what the points are going to be. And it could happen tomorrow. It could happen next week or the week after. And it's like, it kind of throws your whole like hobby work time schedule out of whack. Um, and one of the things that we're talking about is like, well, you can kind of draw inference from the state of the game. Like 40 K is monitored and collated and statted to a pretty ridiculous degree at this point. So if you look at something and you're like, well, we're expecting an MFM this month and the win rate of T sons and sisters of battle are through the roof, they're probably going to get smacked down. Right. And one of the units that's been hotly contested for space Marines is jump pack intercessors because uh, right now, and probably not for another two, three weeks, depending uh, the new blood angels codex is not in play competitively. So it's out on the street because people bought the, the starter box, but the community has decided that until the official points hot fix for a new codex happens, which is not until a week or two after its retail release date, uh, that codex will not be in play competitively. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're in like old Blood Angels and Blood Angels are still incredibly strong. They've had a really good run for uh, a while. And one of the units that is out of balance is Jump Pack Intercessors because in the Sons of Sanguinius Detachment, they have way more utility and way more offensive power than they should for their points cost, right? Are they amazing kill everything in the game? Like, no. But it's a unit that a lot of people rely on because of their utility and being in Sons of Sanguinius, they hit way harder than a normal unit of JPIs. And what we talked about was with the advent of this new uh, precedent with the Imperial Agents Codex, it could be an interesting way to balance the game by having separate point values for units depending on which detachment they're brought in. Mm -hmm. uh, specifically, uh, Sons of Sanguinius with regards to JPIs. So um, it's unfair to normal Space Marine players, like if you're playing Gladius or Iron Storm or Stormlance or whatever it might be, like, oh, my army is getting indirectly punished for the sins of Blood Angels or mm -hmm. Dark Angels or something like that, right? Where like if you really like running Vindicators because they're a solid unit for their point cost, but they get jumped up in price because they're in every single Dark Angels list, stuff like that, right? So it would be a little bit of extra work for the devs, but it would make sense that if you play Sons of Sanguinius, JPIs cost a little bit more than normal rest of the yeah. uh, Space Marine. Code. It's yeah. funny that yeah. you're bringing up Blood Angels because Blood Angels were the first codex to have that like the army of death back in third edition the blood angels had a special edition uh supplemental codex that dropped well, that it was the whole army was death company and everything was 25 percent more expensive that was that was just like these are units they're all death company 25 percent more expensive because they're obviously more baller right mm -hmm. so it's interesting that now we're coming back around and blood angels are the culprits again but they haven't always been the culprits. Other examples, you know, can be cited. And I've always been of the opinion, White, that that's not the way we should, that's not the way it should be. It should be that the detachment is your cheat code, right? Like that's the free set of cheats that allows you to break the rules that makes you have the extra flavor. Um, but now that we're in a more advanced game state, more factions it kind of has to be the way you're saying it it, it kind of it, 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 it does like there's it's not a simple game anymore it's an advanced game a lot of moving parts and now with this release cycle and also they have proven now that they can update this game they've proven now that they can hot fix this game they've done a great fucking job like you know all criticisms aside they have so it's not a big ask and I think they're looking at it with the precedence that you previously stated of Imperial Asians. Like it, it kind of has to happen. We, you can't punish the vanilla decks Marines 
for the sins, as you stated, of the lineage. That's, right, because... That is more inappropriate than the inversion of that. By yeah, a million it's percent. Like, um, they've done this before, right? And every time it's been bad, uh, poorly received, right? Like, we all remember the, uh, the two-inch deep strike at SoCal Open creating the brokenness of the fly keyword update that they had to roll no, back. Nova. Right? Robin Christ. Oh, Nova. Yeah, Nova. Um, so, yeah, and it's like, if we're playing this game, you have to look at a unit and the reason why people are putting that in lists, right? So if you look at normal Space Marine lists, people are like jump back intercessors for two main reasons. They deep strike for free and they move 12 inches, right? It's not because they cause D3 impact mortals. It's not because chain swords are fucking cracked or something like that. It's for those two reasons. It's You can drop them from the sky somewhere. They can do a secondary. Maybe they live and they can bounce around the table doing stuff or they probably just die. Most mm -hmm. of the time they just, they do their thing, they get you points and then they die, right? Um, and for that purpose, their points cost is fine because offensively they're not very strong unless they're attacking like five guardsmen. Um, and that's what their points yeah, should but, reflect. But, but with in free, terms of single well, yeah, free rules, where it's like you get this bonus and this bonus, and if you attach a captain, you get an extra bonus, and the Sons of Sanguinis attachment gets you this, and you have access to these stratagems. Now, all of a sudden, you're like, well, hmm, why are all these Blood Angels players taking jump pack intercessors? Like, it's probably it's not literally they... the most point efficient, fast moving unit. And the codex for them. Yeah. And with their bonuses, it actually becomes a very like relevant offensive unit on the tabletop, right? It's the same thing with like what um Ragnar does with a regular foot assault intercessors, right? Like are assault intercessors that tight? No, it's because the, Ragnar is with them. The topic is what do you think? And it's like it's the, first off. Like, Mike, I mean, you agree with that? Like, you think they should, if we're going to yeah. pull parrot rules from one from one source for everyone, then do you believe everyone should be individually balanced based on their supplemental rules? Yes, but for a different reason, I think. Mine is more, like, fluff-based. Like, so if you're going to play Blood Angels and Space Wolves, you should be playing Blood Angels and Space Wolves, not Ultramarines. So, so when you bring the quote-unquote normal vanilla uh space marine units into like space wolves or blood angels or whatever you should have to pay a tax for it i like that perspective because a lot because it encourages you and if you want to play ultramarines play ultramarine right if you want to play salamanders play salamanders whatever if you want to play the space marine codex play that but if you wanted to play space wolves play space wolves with all their wolfy units, right? <laughs> it's like, um, and if, you, if you're like, hey, you know what? I really do need this like regular Space Marine unit that I should have access to. Well, you do have access to it, but it costs you a little more. I like that perspective. Because, like, if, if those uh, factions have extra rules than everyone else, it's not balanced uh, into those, the, into the those, points. Yeah, those units should inherently cost a little bit more. Right? It's you know, I mean, it is balanced into you no know, way. It's balanced into Wolfen. It's balanced into Dunwolf Cavalry. Exactly. It's balanced into yeah. Secondary Guard. It's balanced into Death Company. And so you're you're 100 right. So basically, you have like two major options, maybe three. And option one is don't do anything. Let the Blood Angels cheat with their six <laughs> six set of rules, uh, and don't hurt the Ultimate players. Right, then you have the bad option, which is nerf the unit that now punishes the person who wasn't, you know, abusing it. Right, that's got to be off the table. So you're only left with two things. If we agree that we can't punish the innocent, right, then you either have to start rewriting every data sheet for the bespoke specialized unit uh codexes which is preposterous which or, they're not gonna but, but or they kind of did that yeah all they kind of already did that with imperial agents like the data sheets for sisters of battle and Grey Knight terminators are not a lot different but slightly different in the imperial agents codex 
Then in the Green Knights. But that's not a tall order because that's one instance. It's not from Dark Angels, four Space Wolves, yeah, four Blood sure. Angels. It's a lot of extra work to do it that way. So what, what? There is a precedent that they are capable of that. And I actually think that's probably the most sophisticated and most accurate version of this is right. that the blood angel ones are different than the space ones are different than the dark angel ones which are all different than the fucking generic and they've ones. already there's already another precedent in that how easy it is to change the rules right that's existed since the start of 10th edition which is the lord of skulls the lord of skulls has the exact same stat line and weaponry on both data sheets in csm and world leaders but they have a different data sheet ability mm -hmm. because of how that unit interacts with their inherent yeah. Yeah. rules for existing in those two different books. Yeah, great. So I, I love it. So I do. So I think I would like to see a world where it's we're so sophisticated with our hot fixes that the, that they could just write them all different, right? I mean, but like but I, but I would are already separated, right? So yeah. it's like what you do is. So right now you have Space Marines, all Space Marine units, excluding Special Codexes. Then you have Blood Angels, and it's just their bespoke units. All you got to do is have a, a two-sentence asterisk at the top that says, if you take the units listed below in the Sons of Sanguinius detachment, you have to pay this point cost. And you just list things like Assault Intercessors, Jump Back Intercessors, stuff like that, where it's like, these are the problem units that need to be balanced, but only when you take them with this suite of rules. Yeah, that's how they're mm -hmm. going to have to do it because they've already proven that they don't want to write codexes like they used to. They don't want to have a book that has all the same data sheets as this book, slightly different. They don't, they don't want to just keep doing right. that over and over again. Right. So we're going back to the back of the old days where, remember, you would buy a Blood Asia Codex and it would tell you to draw from the Space Marine Codex. Mm -hmm. So we've gone back to that. So I think that's the classiest fix, why it, it, yeah, absolutely. Like just a percentage point increase or a new specialized increase per place you want to take it. it makes a lot of sense. Now, the London GT just happened. You brought your you brought up your tinfoil hat segment, but do you think it's possible that GW is waiting, waiting for the results of that to publish to, to, or do you think it's just already so uh, so I have to be really careful here because I have some inside knowledge and I can't really reveal that without possibly getting somebody in trouble. Mm -hmm. But I can say that uh, it's not outside the realm of possibility, but they've done that, that many, the, they, that was not, done that many times before. Uh, not, so that, was not, that was not the reason I was given. Right. And if you think about it for a second, right. Like to us, it's like, Oh, just update the PDF dog. It's like, it's a lot more involved. Right. So, um, unrelated to the MFM, you got to think about what entails for publishing something uh, on like a more global market for GW. Um, so it's like just this, um, like a Warcom article, right? Like when they push that, it's in the queue for release on a specific day. Like we're putting it in the queue and it'll get to Wednesday release. And it's somewhere in there shuffled in between dozens and dozens of other articles, right? Well, that's just for like one language version of the website. So then you can extrapolate that out for Germany and France and uh, Mexico, Spain and Japan, China, like all that kind of stuff, right? Um, so I'm not saying like no, because there is a not zero chance that they do update stuff after the results of the London GT, but probably not. Mm -hmm. It's fair. Fair. All right. Well, we're about at our time. You guys are listening to this on your way to work today. Know that there's a whole bunch of bonus content floating around on Patreon. And, uh, oh, yeah, we got Mike Haspel here. Mikey, what's the order we do it in, Mike? We do your quote and then it, then we go out. Or we do the go out yeah. and then your quote. No, it's like we do our, yeah. It's the quote is the last thing. I think. The quote is the last thing. All right. So <laughs> thanks for listening to the long war. This podcast has been on the air for over 10 years. We did a big origin story last week. Go back and listen to that. You might learn a thing or two about how this podcast has been in the works since back in the old, uh, forge and narrative days. Mike Haspel was on that podcast with us too. Yeah. So 
you know, we have a gold member situation here. <laughs> but uh, thanks for listening. Uh, uh, you know, consider supporting us, even though the economy's all jacked up. Uh, hit us up on Patreon, longwar.net. Become a veteran of the long war. That used to be our tagline because we, yep. we used to have a big old paywall. Right? And we built it ourselves. And then one day we realized Patreon takes less money, effort. less effort yeah. and less money than like, you, you know, dealing with credit cards and stuff. So, but we saw oh, that you're. Kara Quinn's asking, is Titus put together? No, he is not. He's staying in the box. He's literally so big, I have nowhere to put him. Bro, I can't wait to see you post pictures on the gram. Oh, yeah. It's going to be awesome. But... So, you know, with all that, let's, uh, let's hear from Mike Haspel. Gentlemen, your work today has been outstanding. I intend to recommend you all for promotion in whatever fleet we wind up serving in. Best speed to Genesis.